Hi, 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 hi everybody. <laughs> you, he talks so much shit before we come on. <laughs> we were such in a rush today, too. So yes. Today's going to be... Weird. Yeah, yeah. Weird to jump on here like we, this. You know what? I just said that literally because I did videos before this, and I was talking about how this is a crazy week for us, and last week was a crazy yeah. week, you know, and of course, you guys know, um, we are still talking to... Murray's husband, Murray, who is a part of the Adams family, still is a part of the Adams family, um, talking to him about what we can do. Hopefully we have an answer by today of something we can put together. But then this week for us also, what is this week, Jason? It just, it, it's just a shit show, guys. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it any better. You know, um, I have been got, getting so many um, messages and DMs and stuff like that about like Anchor Watch and some Banner Purples after parties, as you know, just to, as a reminder. We're putting the after parties on hold for right now. And Anchor Watch is on hiatus only because we are moving. And there are a lot of things that are going into this move because it's we're actually moving into our home and not a rental for once. So which is kind of great because I feel like the past few places we lived have been our own rentals. Yeah. And now they're rented out. And so we need a home. So now we're moving into a home, which is nice. But with that comes a lot of problems <laughs> so yes. we're battling them and the to-do list one thing at a time so we will get there but anchor watch really quickly i know i'm like talking a lot already no go ahead anchor watch is on hiatus not only because of our move but also josh and greg and every co-host i have on anchor watch is like super also entangled in personal things so it's just and you know it's funny we'll be back guys jason will be back jason said <laughs> sooner than later this morning he's like we have a list of things that we have to do for the move. Like, what do you have to do? And I said, I have to go to the gym and then I have to record. And then of course we have to do some TikToks. I have to get a haircut. I have to get my eyebrows trimmed, my nose waxed and all of these. And Jason's like, right. What are you, what are you doing for that? What house? are we doing for the house? Yeah. <laughs> like, we have, I was like, we have, but you know what? Charleston is such an awesome town. We have been there every week for the past six weeks five weeks i think we've been going up every week yeah it's about an hour from where we are now and we've been having just a blast there it's such a great place we're so excited to call it home so people definitely. julia john said i miss anchor watch as well Toaster well, we're JB, also we're also wax, looking yeah. for for also anybody who is interested in potentially co-hosting and i'm talking to a few people now because um you know yeah Heather said, love when Jason is on. And oh my God, doesn't it really hurt to wax your nose? Yes. Oof. Yes. They stick a ball of wax up your nose and then they laugh at you and they're like, one, two. They don't even get to three and they go. Wah! And you you're know like, what? fuck. No pain, no gain. You yeah. definitely want to take care of the nose hairs, right? Beauty I'd rather is... go through the pain than see them. Beauty oh. is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, speaking of moves. Um, and also, by the way, I know that I, I it's so funny because and we're about to get into the hot, messy topics, we're thinking of new fun things to do with members. And this week and the past few weeks have just been crazy with the, the moves and everything else that we have going on, family. But we're hopefully going to be settling down this next month. I always say that. <laughs> um, but I yeah. think it would be fun for our members only, since everybody's been waiting for the behind-the-scenes content. We're going to take you into that move with us and just sort of show you a lot of the behind-the-scenes. Because all you guys normally see is what we, where we record, whether it's yeah. Jason stuck in a bedroom or us here in our living room or a studio. So I think that'll be a little bit more personal, which yeah. I don't... 
at first I was kind of against it because I talked to a few people, content creators who have much bigger followings and they were like, don't let people into your house, into your space. Don't let them bring their energy in there. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. Let's just show them. Yeah. I mean, what is that? What yeah. does that mean? I think it'd be fun to show the decorating process because we're really talented with decorating. I swear. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> I, I always give Jason, like I stress Jason out because I talk about like- Can I say- what can I interrupt you because yeah. you had a whole like like list going of things that you were getting for the other the other property yeah that we were trying to put together really fast and I'm like this is not going to look good together and he's like just trust me trust me everything got set up we got everything done with it and it actually looked amazing I so agree you might have you might have the eye as they call it the I, eye toaster the JB said <laughs> let's do a housewarming party yeah yeah oh that'd be that'll fun. be our members housewarming party yeah that'd be fun but speaking of houses guys i did a video this morning to get ready for this and we have a lot of moves especially in the vanderpump world we have ariana maddox who just bought a 1.6 million dollar hollywood hills home and i'm gonna I show did not photos. hear about that okay, okay so she actually had all of it she did her rep did somebody did okay had all of the shit scrubbed because they released the house with the address, with the photos, of course, on Zillow. You know how like when you buy a house, you can ask Zillow to take all the photos down? Yeah. So she, they had everything removed from Zillow, but then they forgot there was Redfin and all of these other sites, whatever. Oh and my then God. Ben Balak, who is on Buying Beverly Hills, who's one of Mauricio's top agents for the agency, was the one who sold Ariana her house. And he went on Instagram because he's known for selling homes via YouTube uh, no. and social so media. He's like, this yeah. is 65342 <laughs> Roosevelt Drive or yeah. whatever it is, right? Yeah. yeah. And he's like, just sold to my client, Ariana Maddox, which it's probably like. So Listen, it doesn't was, take much, though, to find someone's address online, unfortunately. But you can. There are. There are. Blind trusts. But no, but there are. There are what? Blind trusts. You can do blind trusts. You can put it in an LLC, stuff like that. But also you can. I know there are services that can go and remove. We had our names removed from a lot of things. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. It's, that's true. It's definitely worth worth a look. But I then we're, what we use. We're kind of dumb about it too, because then when we need to rent a place, we promote it on social media. <laughs> so we whatever. So it's fine. Lala Kent just went through this. Just to give you guys a heads up, Lala Kent bought a three point three million dollar house, which is insane. The wow. same year that she just bought her one point three or one point five million dollar house in Palm Springs. So she's obviously doing the damn thing, but she bought this new house and she got pissed because she bought it in a blind trust, right? When she bought the house, actually, I'm going to play a clip for you guys. But when she bought the house, she ended up, you know, like going through the motions to get it in a blind trust, blah, blah, blah. She wanted security. So she hired armed guards to drive past her house. Like she went the full night. What is your opinion on that? I armed remember. guards? Yeah. Are you, are you wait, wait, I'm sorry. Who? Lala Kent. Had armed guards to what? Drive past the house? Yes. To look at it? I'm going to I'm gonna play a clip for you. Wait, 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 wait. Here wait. we go. Okay. Yeah, please. Nice townhouse that you live in. But I'm like, wait a minute. She's going to outgrow this townhouse. Yeah. Did you... Are you moving? I purchased a home. <gasps> Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Did you already move in? I moved in. Yeah. When I need did you some move help in? with like my primary bedroom. I'm not great at figuring out primary bedroom spaces. Okay. Um, I moved in a little over a month ago, I want to say. Congratulations. Thank it, you. Where in Sherman Oaks? It's in Sherman Oaks. Okay. How come that hasn't been has that been reported yet? I I that I didn't has. really make it a big to do. Yeah. You know, I, I tried to keep, you know, I, I have my daughter there. I have a uh, new baby coming to the house. I was like, does this really need to be spoken about? Not really. Yeah. But usually people will grab it and they'll find out about it or the public records or whatever. But, um, yeah, well, I worked really hard to make sure that it was in a blind trust. Right. Yes. And then this like dumb bitch who's, who's a real <laughs> estate agent <laughs> in LA did all this behind the scenes work and posted some TikTok, basically showing the house where it is. So I wasn't thrilled about that. Yeah. And then we had a little bit of paparazzi action at my daughter's birthday, which I didn't love that either. I think some of my cast members love that. Mm. I don't really enjoy that. You would think I would enjoy it because I'm like, look at me. I'm, you, you know, reality TV. Let me shove myself down your throat. When I'm at home, like, please go the fuck away. We well, are also a Can single woman. Can we say woman. the F word on this show? Yes. I can't yeah. remember. You're also okay. a single woman with a three-year-old. Right. And a baby on the way. You want to protect. You want your privacy. I mean, is it gated the house? Yes. Good. 
but secure. You got the cameras, you got the alarm, you got all of that. Right. Oh, we're like yes, so, and okay. I have I ha I pay for armed security to you know make passes by the house um mm -hmm. pretty frequently. Oh, okay. okay, that's so that's actually pretty common in LA. I thought you meant she had her own her own uh, security private armed security that she hired. It's actually pretty common okay. because. Um, where I used to live in, in a neighborhood, I lived in, in a family's like guest house. Don't get it twisted, but it was an, an area considered to be Bel Air and they had armed security going all the time, you know, that would just drive by the house and you can have the security check in on your, you know, you see them drive around all the time in LA. Oh, so it's not that big of a deal. It's not like, yeah, it's kind of like having, um, uh, someone drive past, look at your house and kind of, it, it's a common thing. It's not, it's not like she had two guards with like. Big, I don't even want to make that. Yeah, but, you yeah, know, yeah. Big, like, <laughs> Please. Big machine weaponry at, at their at their house. That's pretty common. Elaine, thank you for the super chat and or, or I'm sorry for gifting the five hey, guys. memberships. And also thank you, Kimberly, the queen, 1961. That's so sweet. I did want to show you guys this though because the photos are out. Oh, this is this is Ariana's new three bedroom, Look at two that. bath, Ben the house. Lock. This house is in Hollywood Hills. Okay. So much for privacy, huh? This is the living room. Kitchen. Cute. So, it's, it's a cute, cute house. It's a cute house. It's obviously a lot smaller, but she probably doesn't need all that space that she had in the other but house. But it's small. It's so funny what people consider small and big nowadays. No, uh, I'm talking about because her other house was over 5,000 square feet almost. It was like 4,700 square feet. That's a big ass You house. and I have talked about this too because we don't own huge properties, but like what would we do the thing is it's like we can barely clean the dishes out of the freaking sink let don't alone say that and I, make us look okay like sorry trash. you can barely clean the, oh, the dishes out of the sink bitch. but five thousand square feet that's just so much upkeep so i mean i'm, I'm sure oh, this is a beautiful view what a cute yard and yeah. garden and everything oh wait and look too i mean i don't know how much i love the different colored windows but it's no, a not so much it's yeah it's very personal it's very personal so th there's like a whole patio with a view the patio fits up to 20 people this is oh, the that's view cool. okay Gorgeous. oh nice so you have a view so it's kind of like hollywood hills Oh, you know where this is? Oh, I know exactly where this is. Do you? Yeah. Is that the one I want to go back? Oh, I'm going to say where it is. So that, that faces the valley. Yeah. Hollywood Hills facing the valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, because Very that's cute. the Hogwarts castle. Correct. Got it. Yeah. So the windows. You know, Zac Efron used to live in that area, I think. That's her bedroom. Yeah, but this is the house. Interesting. So, and then Sheena bought a house. <laughs> and Sheena's somebody was supposed to get this right and put i believe sheena how do i word this i believe sheena also wanted her stuff to remain private and i don't think that it worked out that way is my mic okay yeah oh jason's always always helping me you know for the, the podcast it just has to sound good too yeah you know what i mean <laughs> yeah but that's kind of where we're at with that now since we're on the vanderpump rules train i want to so talk okay could we back up just two seconds yeah so Ariana has a home that's um, valley adjacent now, okay? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> you can kind of see it. Uh, we have Lala, who is in the valley, Sherman Oaks, where we used to live. You have Sheena, who is now in Sherman Oaks. Do you see kind of a pattern here of what the future of Vanderpump Rules might be? Lala will never join the valley. She already did. She or was not on episode I'm, one. I'm not saying Lala, sorry. Ariana will never join the valley. Well, I mean, the thing is, is the Valley represents, a, it's like a different kind of lifestyle. So I don't think Ariana would be a fit for the Valley. I think that, right? I, I, I don't think that she'd be a fit for the Valley. And I also think that there are a lot of people who would want her to evolve past this. Because let me say something really quick. Lisa Rinna ended up leaving the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And now she's walking in Balenciaga and she's going to these fashion shows. She's sitting next to the Kardashians. She is you know in new movies she's on the cover of massive magazines so she's really in new movies lisa Rinna. have we seen any of them well she oh, i know lisa she or, uh, lindsay lohan's in new movies no she but I, don't, I haven't seen like lisa Rinna in new she, movies she announced that they're coming um oh. i can't play the clip because it's like a it's not a good one to play but she announced that they're coming but anyways getting back to ariana maddox coming soon uh, coming soon yeah <laughs> ariana's brother ended up doing a press thing at uh, hold on. Actually, I'm just going to play it for you. Okay. I feel like it's way better. I haven't heard it, so this should be interesting. Tell me if you find this to be threatening or not. That's okay. what I want to hear from you guys. Okay. Are you enjoying a laugh with Tom Sandoval, or was I mistaken? Um, 
<laughs> my lawyers always told me to shut the fuck up. I see. Okay, that's fair enough. But you know, I got to ask the hard questions. You uh, understand that? Was it, maybe it was an uh, optical illusion I saw. I don't I know. I think yeah, you might be hallucinating. I could be. Look, it's it's not the first time. You might be hallucinating, but. We can find out it's the world hallucinating on season 12. We don't want to give away the bits. Do I have to delete that? I might have to delete that. For now, I'll plead the fifth. You may or may not have seen some things. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll go with that. I'll take that. So yeah. that's the official word, folks. That's the, that's, that's the official word. That is the hard stance of yeah. Jeremy Maddox. And uh, depending on how long it takes for me to hear from my sister, will determine on whether I stick, stick, whether to, I that. stick to that stance or I not. understand. I yes, understand. Sir. Yeah, I understand. Look, I mean, I that was a first. So, okay, so back up, though. What are they asking him about? So they're asking him. He walked into the premiere for The Valley, right? And when he did, he hugged Tom Sandoval. They got, they got that on camera. Mm-hmm. So they wanted to know, wait a minute, last time we heard from you, you said you wanted to beat Tom Sandoval's ass. So now all of a sudden you're buddy buddy. Well, he said, unfortunately, you know, you're going to have to wait for season 12 and see season 12 has not been greenlit. Jeremy Maddox is not going to be on it because he's just not unless you like make a cameo like Jesse Montana or somebody like that. You know, I mean, he has more of a reason than some of the extras we were talking about last. Right, right. He has more of a reason. Sure. But he's just not going to be on the show. And from that point, he was saying, depending on if my sister gives me time or not, because I've been reaching out and she's too busy, that will be what deciphers how I maneuver going forward, whether or not I do want to rekindle a friendship with Tom and open these doors and say mm-hmm. what I want to say. So the ball is in her court. Say, what do you want to say, though? Well, Because we haven't thing- heard from him in a long time. I mean, can I say that that would be one threat? You would be dead to me. Oh, oh, like you would yeah. family wise if family turned on me like that especially when you're on a tv show and you know i know jeremy uh, pretty well you know from pump and and i, I just know him by seeing him oh no he, i've had great conversations he's a really cool guy he just seems you know same kind of demeanor as his sister it seems like they're really nice and stuff but this yeah i think if yeah oh, that's kind of a let me see oh this unplugged Hold on, you guys. Hold on, guys. <laughs> Is our mic unplugged? Play the rest of this. Okay. Oh, uh, better? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so. Anyways, back to it. I thought that that was a little ridiculous, but he did sort of issue this threat. And this is what I was going to say about, this is the whole point of talking about this going into the Valley is I think Ariana, the way, the reason that she's being so absent and everything is because she's focusing on this career, knowing that she has one shot. She needed to kill dancing with the stars. She needed, she needs to kill Chicago. She needs to kill these things in order for her to have longevity in any of these businesses moving on past the show. If she doesn't want to do reality TV, if she looks at it like, Oh my God, these opportunities are going to keep coming and she half asses them. Yeah. You have to lean into reality TV. Cause what else do you have? No, a hundred percent. I just, I feel, yeah. Okay. Now that everything is in context and we've heard him, you know, say, okay, depending on how long it takes to hear from my sister, listen, I don't hear from my siblings every day. No. We don't talk every day. And then sometimes we're busy. You know, my sister has a fiance. My brother has stuff going on, you know, like uh, we are always doing something. So it's not always convenient, but um, yeah, it did sound a little threatening, didn't it? I thought so. A little condescending, too. I thought so. And in order to wrap this up for Vanderpump Rules, because I don't want to sp- spend like all of the time on this. By the way, guys, go ahead, pop off in um, the, the live chat, and then also hit the like button. You guys are coming in very low. Sorry, guys. Well, it looks like we should be fine. Sometimes when we're um, recording together, it kind of... Oh. Hi, I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston's fun. Maybe we'll see you guys around. Anyways, what I was going to say is Raquel, Rachel Levis, whatever you want to call her, she released a list of the people who knew pre Scandaball. And that list had eight people's names on it. Was Jeremy Maddox on the list? No. Okay. But Logan Cochran was. Yeah, but the way she explained the list of people was kind of like weird. Right. Right. Well, it's like, well, Max Boyan saw me and Tom at our favorite dive bar that we like to go in to, in the valley. 
And it's like, okay, but did he say you guys were like together or a thing? And then or she said he never just, mentioned anything. He probably didn't because he didn't want to say anything. He right? probably didn't care. Or, or care, right? right? I mean, there's no, I don't know. It's but strange. Then also for Logan, like Logan walked in and we were laying on, you know, like on the ground together. We weren't covered with anything, but we were just laying there looking at each other. And Logan released a statement. He's like, first of all, moron, like we used to do cuddle puddles all the time. And I'm like, cuddle puddles. Cuddle puddles. Interesting. So they used to do cuddle puddles. So he didn't think anything of it, which I'm like, again, okay. What does a cuddle puddle look like? Like, uh, it's like, <laughs> I don't know what like, the hell is a that like puddle similar is. to an orgy or what is a cuddle puddle? I don't know. Do you just like, we're back. Do I'm, you lay in like a couch like together and just kind of like, I'm backing out of the cuddle or? puddle. I'm backing out of the cuddle. Yeah, no, no, no. I like my space. I need my space. Even even at night when we go to bed, I like make sure our dog is in between us because I need the space. Jason makes I a love a good cuddle with pillows. But I do need like when I sleep, I just need space, you know? I just like you're like a magnet. It's like, ah <laughs> get off. <laughs> That's not true, you guys. I just like like a good stretch, you know? Like I gotta you just need your own bed. Hey, that's we can do bunk beds. We That'll can like below deck it and like I'll take the top bunk, you can take the bottom bunk, or you can take absolutely not. whatever you want. That's not happening. Okay. Okay. All right. Moving All on. Right. Moving on. Now, moving on. Kyle Richards has officially hired a divorce attorney, and it looks like people were kind of right in the sense that a lot of people were assuming that they were going to wait for this show to come out buying Beverly Hills before they made the next moves. And now it's kind of seeming like that. I don't know if you guys watch buying Beverly Hills. I personally really enjoyed season two and Jason watched probably about 30 minutes of episode one and was like, yeah, I watched, I, you know what? I loved season one and I don't know if I love season one because there wasn't a lot on and I really wanted to watch something. I love reality. Um, real estate shows yeah. like i love i'm looking forward to buying london which comes out in may um but i don't know like it was interesting to get to know them now that i know some of them i'm just like it's kind of like you know what it is selling sunset for me i always turn it off after like 15 minutes because i'm just over it well, some, i want to yeah. see the real estate i really don't want to see and i think buying beverly hills does a better job of showcasing that yeah but um it's a lot of the family it's drama, a lot though. of the family drama and yeah. also like Leave it on Beverly Hills. I don't want to see the whole Kyle Mauricio drama kind of dragged over into another show where we have to relive it, right? But a lot of people were waiting for this, and he shared a totally different side. He said, listen, I don't know the nature of Kyle's relationship with Morgan Wade. He said that he was not the one who initiated this split, that that was Kyle Richards. He also said that at the time, he still wanted to remain married, but now he doesn't even know where he stands. And he said he can see himself moving out, splitting up. Right after that, that happened on Friday where it dropped, right? Buying Beverly Hills. And then on Saturday, the news came out that Kyle Richards hired a divorce attorney. So I personally think that that's exactly what they were waiting for. And I think that Such that also shame. helps with ratings for buying Beverly Hills. And I mean, it didn't really help for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, did it? If I can tell you there are two shows this year that I kind of checked out of, and that has to be Potomac and Beverly Hills because I just thought it was the most un uninteresting seasons to me on both. And a lot of people liked Potomac, but that's one of my favorite shows. You know, that's the area I'm from. So you I wanted watch to kind any of, of it. I didn't watch any of it. No. You know, and I don't know if it's Mia or Robin, which I, ooh, we'll talk about in a minute. We're going to get into that. I don't know what it is that, that drives me nuts about it, but I just, I miss some of the the past seasons just the past couple and i know i say this and and everything ebbs and flows yeah right you right. have below deck ebbs and and flows of vanderpump rules you know they've been flowing a lot lately but you know you have the ups and downs yeah um elaine hargate thank you again for thanks the elaine adam memberships we appreciate you all right so we're not surprised by this. Can we just move on? Yeah, no one is. And I think I'm I, I think everyone is sick of talking about Kyle and kind Maurizio. of like Scandaval. Kind of like Scandaval. But like there was a lot of unanswered questions with with the whole Maurizio and Kyle drama and the Morgan Wade BS and all of this. You know, there's all these like unanswered questions. We don't know what to think. We don't know what to do. And then every day is a different story. Whereas Scandaval, we knew exactly what happened. Right. So that was easier to talk about. That was easy, easier to you kind of stayed interested a little bit, you know? You can totally tell I didn't take an allergy pill today. I'm like, what? The pollen guys here, by the way, is crazy. Hey, guys, I got a tan. Well, we were in Charleston. It was warm. And, we, you know, we live near the beach. And it's so nice because last week at Vanderpump Rules, 
recap, I looked like a ghost and I'm recovering from being sick. So I feel so much better. Oh my God. I'm I didn't mean to like say that after you just said that you forgot to take an allergy. Wow. I I'm that. so happy for you. Thanks. You feel great. I appreciate your that. Your face looks like all snatched and everything. Not this yet. is great. Yet, my guys. nose is running. My eyes are watery. This, oops. Jason, I am so happy for you. <laughs> now, moving on. I wanted to talk about this because I want to know if you think that this is being petty Betty or if you agree with what's going on. As you guys know, there are multiple Bravo liberties that keep pulling out lawsuits against Andy, Shed, Evolution, Bravo, NBC, all of the things, right? Well, no one has really personally targeted Andy the way that Leah McSweeney has because even NeNe Leakes, a lot of people thought that that was her you know, drawing the line in the sand, like with, with her friendship by claiming that she was working in a hostile environment that she felt like was racist, but that was her experience. So you can't tell her she's wrong. For no, that. no, you can take that away from her. No, you can't. Sure. Absolutely not. So, okay, Nini, that's a different situation. I'm compartmentalizing here. Bethany Frankel, nobody understands why she wanted to burn down the house, but I get it. They're never going to talk again. No. And she's still striking matches. And she's you know, still, yeah. Yeah, she's going. And Leah McSweeney, she just decided to say, hey, not only are they fostering a hostile work environment that's not conducive to anybody with mental health issues or substance abuse issues, mm. but she's claiming that she knows that Andy participates and partakes in certain settings where there might be a little involved. And Andy Cohen and his attorneys came out and said, this is bull. Take this back or we're going to sue you because every day that you leave these ridiculous, you know, statements out there that could potentially affect me and my business. And these are baseless statements. You don't have anything to back this up, right? Well, then Leah came back again and she's like, actually, I stand behind my statements because I have the truth behind me and I'm not backing up. And sometimes it's scary to go against the man, but here I am. And her attorneys even said, it looks like Bravo's PR team and, you know, NBC's PR team is, I guess, deserving of more money because they're working in overtime to hide all of the shady shit going on behind the scenes. So that's just to catch you up. Then after that, she takes a dig at Andy Cohen over Kate Middleton. She posts this on social media. Go ahead. Andy Cohen gets a kick out of being out of being cruel to women and Kate Middleton is no exception. I hope that after she was forced to uh, publicly talk about her cancer diagnosis, he will muster up the decency to apologize to her. Like a lot of people have um, people with power need to lead by example. I feel like she's looking for a fight because Kate Middleton and Andy Cohen have nothing to do with one another. Whatever Andy Cohen says about Kate Middleton isn't going to reach her ears. I mean, does anybody you know, it's listen like, to Howard Stern? That, or any? Well, that's different. He's a he's like known for it. Yeah, he's like a what do they call him? The shock jocks or whatever. Mm. Like, yeah, I I don't know. I feel like she's reaching. And here's my my issue with this specifically because you know she did say that she it's a toxic workplace for people with mental health and it's a toxic workplace for people who have substance abuse problems. When in your life. And anyone, you know, who, who, when do people lose responsibility for themselves? And when do you take responsibility for themselves? When do you become an adult? I believe Leah is over 40 years old. Yeah. As I am, right? Yeah. I make my own decisions. If I put myself in a situation as someone who had substance abuse problems or mental health issues, and then I signed up for Did the- Did you point at me and say- No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Or, you know, and I, I said, you know what? I want to join the Real Housewives of New York City because that will be good for my mental health issues. That'll be good for my substance abuse issues. Bullshit. Like, you put yourself in the situation. But like many people have said, you don't have to pick up the cup when it's offered to you. You know? You don't have to drink the juice when it's given to you. Many of the women choose. Many of the women and many cast members of other reality shows are asking for the cocktails all the time. Right. You know, but that doesn't mean you have to get plastered. Shit face. You know, so I think Lisa Vanderpump's response to the whole Liam McSweeney thing and the defense of Andy Cohen. Remember She's that a, a few weeks ago? She's like, you didn't see me plastered ever on TV. It's really a choice. And at this point, I, I'm not really understanding what she's going for other than she had a bad last representation on Bravo, the Real she Housewives of the Girls Trip. She doesn't have a trip. job anymore. She doesn't have a job anymore. This is person, my opinion. Okay, 
this is my opinion. I believe that she does not have a job anymore. She knows this, right? They're not going to mix her back into the Roni, whatever. Yeah. Especially after what happened with her ultimate girls trip, Thailand. She was a, a nightmare to work with. So they're not going to have her back on ultimate girls trip. She got paid 200 or 250,000. I believe Kelly Dodd said for that. Um, and then from that point, she knows that the reality reckoning is happening. So people think people are guessing that maybe Leah might be running out of money and that this is something that could be easy to grab onto. And I you know and the other thing too, with, with people coming out, because I understand there are real issues and I think Nini tackled some of those. And I, I think there are some other issues where like you bring it up. It's like, why didn't you say something then? Why is it always later? Why, 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 if it was so bad, why didn't you say anything? Right. You know what I mean? And that that's, I mean, everyone's different and I understand that and you feel pressure in different situations, especially when you have a conglomerate behind you and you're filming a show and you have pressure to, to put on a show. But I just, I don't know, something, mm, something doesn't sit, sit right. Actually, let's go to, I'm actually talking to someone about this from this. I know says same thing Brandy did all the way at the bottom there. Same thing Brandy did. Yeah. So I, I find everything is a little off right now because I've heard mixed things uh, from Brandy from personal close uh, relationships of Brandy that Brandy and Andy used to be best friends and but you Brandy know, said that they never but were. then they, they said they out. never hung out at all but her reps said you have no idea Andy and Brandy are, are and this was like before all of this came out yeah so it's very confusing to, to to see where it's coming from but I don't know yeah and Margaret Joseph's know. never drinks great point that's now, a good point. We're going to end up moving on from this because speaking of drinking, we had Karen Huger this past week Ugh. who crashed her Maserati into a tree. The photos were terrifying, so thank God she's okay. Um, it was after a night out with her friends, and she said that this was not – she got a DUI, but she said it was not because of alcohol. It was because she was extremely distraught, and she was upset. She got the DUI because she refused to blow. Mm -hmm. so after this car accident they wanted her to blow into a breathalyzer and if you refuse you automatically go to jail like you have to do it right there on the spot but a lot of people will do as a tactic if they are drinking mm -hmm. they will not blow then and there whatever because then from that point they have to get you to the police station and it gives you time to literally have like the alcohol come out of your body they have to process you they have to book you and then they'll forcibly take your blood and then they have to process the blood. So you have time for the alcohol to come out of your system. And I think that that's what she was hoping for. But automatically, you get the DUI I mean, as soon as you decide listen, not to blow. Yeah. And I look at, we'll look at the car and look what happened. Look at this, the situation. You know, I, we just saw her at BravoCon in November and she looked great. She looked great. And it was, she was so lovely to talk. I really like her a lot. Um, <laughs> why does that do that? <laughs> it was such the wrong time know, for that to happen. Sorry guys. Also. If you're listening on the podcast, if you make any kind of signs like sign language with your body, like the, the stream function will make, um, little emojis pop up on the screen. So it's very confusing because I was doing thumbs up and that is not something to be thumbs up about, but to see her car in that situation and it, I mean, really, we've watched this happen, you know, twice recently with, with Shannon and now Karen. It's a hard situation to be in, but I'm I'm really glad she's safe and okay. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing is that she's, you know, safe and okay and, you know, things can happen. And I don't, I'm not going to sit here and judge her for that. So um, I think she, based off of what she's saying, she claims that she was distraught over the passing of her mother and she got into that conversation and then she left and she was just very manic and something happened and she just swerved. Okay. That's her story. So yeah. we're going to see how this plays out. Obviously that's up to the court to decide, but since we're on the topic of the real housewives of Potomac, I wanted to bring this up as well, because this is the cast of the real housewives of Potomac. And now we have two exit statements from today. Well, one exit statement and one rumored exit. Candace Stiller Bassett announced that after six seasons, she is six or five. I think it's six. Six. Six seasons. She is exiting the Real Housewives of Potomac and that it has been an amazing run for her. But also she is overwhelmed with other opportunities. Which she has said for a while now. I want to say for at least two years. Okay, so this is where I wonder really quick. Because I don't want to go to bat with Candace Stiller Bassett. <laughs> been there it's not fun 
and now I, I really enjoy her and Chris. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like absolutely. they're they're so nice to like we like them. My question is: is was this a moment to take a breath of fresh air and put her like on a pause and let her go do those things? It, you know what I mean. Like, would she can can she walk away from that check right now? That hefty Real Housewives of Potomac check because she is so busy. Because even Kelly Dodd, I always go back to what she said. Unless you're like Heather DeBro Rich or you're Lisa Vanderpump or Bethany Frankel, you don't walk away from this kind of money, you know? So especially six seasons on. Yeah, yeah it's an easy I know, paycheck. I agree. She I agree. For and three, even three months. Three months. And then you have the rest of the year. I mean, I don't know if they wanted to start a family or whatever their future plans are, but you have the rest of the year to kind of fit in that schedule, you know? But right. I do have to say if you are an artist like Candace is, and she has that going for her where she's a singer. She's pursuing she a like lot a of star. acting opportunities. I think she's just at the beginning of her career. Um, Bravo does require a lot of time from you from filming. Then you have a Bravo con, then you have uh, different appearances you have to make and do to stay within your contract. So maybe it is time to like, see, She's a smart woman. So I think she's like, maybe this is the time for me to go see if there are other opportunities that fit my life better than being on reality TV. Now, with that said, a lot of what Candace has spoken about and um, gone at bat with people over the past few years has been a little confrontational and uh, definitely conflicting opinions on, on things like that. So maybe it is time for a little bit of a break. Well, she just, <laughs> in, you know, and again, this is not an attack on Candace, but she just recently came out and in an interview and said that she's like afraid of having light skin babies. And people were really upset about that because people were like, how can you say that? But she's pretty much saying, this is my opinion. And I want a baby that looks like me, but I know that I have a white husband. So there are definitely more controversial topics that come up with, you know, having such strong stances on things. And it, you never know. I'm chalking this up to the fact that she is booked and busy. She is going to be in the studio. She is going to be on set and we are going to see her on streaming services. But also my next question is, and don't pee shady. Did Robin leave? Cause she's booked and busy. No, I I read somewhere, and I think it was a review of the finale of Potomac, where they said, <laughs> it's so God. shady. It's kind of how I felt. It's like watching a stick grow in mud, or someone said something like that. And I, I, I just, I haven't found Robin interesting since she's been on the show. That's what I ever said. at one, not one point ever. I, I never have, there's never an episode, a season, or a reason for Robin except Giselle needing a side piece you know or a side piece that sounds horrible yeah well a sidecar a, a sidekick <laughs> a sidekick yeah a sidecar <laughs> alcohol little, no 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 like a sidecar of the uh, of the like, I, I think i was motorbike. gonna say isn't a sidecar alcohol and a side piece is side like your like great drink your little you know you know friend. the one that you don't know about yeah like mia had a side piece you know <laughs> apparently yeah apparently I, I think this is good for the franchise right now as i said it's been a battle between, for me, and this is my opinion, guys, between Potomac and Beverly Hills, I could not tell you which bored me more. I really can't. And Potomac has never, I don't think there's been one season of Potomac that has bored me. Season one. Oh, season one. But, you know, you just got to know. I, I gave know, it a chance because I, I was excited we were in the D.C. area. But the last from, season but, you of know. Real Housewives of Atlanta bored us. Yeah. I mean, but these are the older franchises. I guess Potomac isn't so old, but... Beverly Hills is older. You know, OC, we needed to change it up, and we did, and it's getting better, and I think this season's going to be even better. I think so, too. I think there is a time where you've plateaued, and we got to see how things work and change things up. I think Candace probably decided to leave to go pursue other opportunities. If I were at her age and stage in life, and I was thinking I don't want to be a reality TV star for the rest of my life, this is the opportunity this is the moment. to go find out. You know, she's at the she's at prime age. She's prime everything right now. Go she do it. Looks fantastic. With Robin, I don't know why they didn't make this decision season three. You know, like I, I don't I I don't understand that at all. So yeah, with Atlanta, what we've talked about before is we've said you know you're missing key elements. You always they always try to who am I talking to? You like Bravo sitting in front of me. They always try to revamp these shows they with, actually they probably with new people. Yeah, and sometimes that doesn't. I mean, like you can do it within the first few seasons, 
you know, or you can do it later if, they're, if there's a, a personality, like as far as like housewives go. You can do it with other shows. You can bring on new people all the time, like Vanderpump Rules, you know, you could try. Um, but housewives, they have to have that personality. They almost have to be like, I feel like it's. I feel like they have to be sprinkled in also. They can't, you can't yeah. just have like a whole. Brand new housewife. Right. Right. You got to kind of introduce them and see if they work. But the key elements that were missing for something like Atlanta for me was the OG. We're missing the those OGs. And that OG kind of, I don't know, screen time. Like, Portia, thank God she's coming back. Yeah. You know, like, this is going to, now I'm going to watch. And I think a lot of people will kind of look at it differently this time. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Sorry, guys, I'm going to run on sentence. Here. I mean, listen, that's okay. <laughs> by, by the way, also, they're not the only ones who have exit statements. Emery Wiley, which I'm not surprised. Um, she's not going to be on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And she feels like she was robbed because she said in her exit statement, I don't feel like I got to share my husband with you guys. I don't feel like I got to share my family and I wish I wouldn't have listened to producers and I wouldn't have taken all of their guidance. I wish I would have now looking back would have done what I wanted to do. That's where you don't know what you don't know until you learn it. And at this point it was too late. You know, Dana Wilkie has mentioned this, right? Dana Wilkie, if you go listen to her Patreon, she gives a lot of the secrets and tips and she does a great job, but she talks about the fact that she wishes the season that she was on and her like chance that she had, she thought that they were all friends. She didn't know that they were going in confessionals and trashing her <laughs> or else she would have done the same thing, which is like, you don't know what you don't know. And she probably thought, Anne-Marie, if I listen to producers, I'm going to be a shoe in but that's not always true. I do want to bring this because I've seen a couple of people in the live chat. So I want to bring this up because I mentioned to you that to this to you with this morning, right? What? That does this open up the door to bring Monique back oh, to yeah. Potomac? And how would you feel about that? Because me, I am. I also liked Monique on the show. I thought she had a different kind of flavor. I thought she had a different kind of energy. And it really worked with the other ladies. And authentically, she had genuine relationships with them, right? Yeah, well, so now do, does this leave the door open for her? Is it interesting if she comes back at this point? Cause it's been a minute. Like what, what do you think? Well, her life is different. She's not technically a housewife anymore. She, and I don't mean just based off of Potomac, right? Like mm -hmm. she's now divorced, right? Did it go through? Are they still in the process? Uh, and I, don't know, I would imagine with that much money, it's probably a process. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, listen, Monique was the one who walked away in the beginning. Like she, she was offered a contract back after, you know, her and Candace had their thing. So she's always, the door has always been open. She just felt like, and her thing wasn't always just against Candace. Her thing was against Giselle and the rest of them spreading a rumor of the paternity of her child. Yeah. So that was the thing. But okay. Now, by the way, it's are, so crazy to me that what? You know, these people are mothers sometimes. You know, you think about like, you watch the kids, like just not if you know my mom, you last night crazy. Where, was it last night or the night before when um, Giselle and her and, and the daughters are watching the, the oldest one go away and, and it's like, God, you you forget that they're actually like kind people. Giselle, I think, is a great mother. And I think she's really showing that on the show, yeah. too, you know. And but then it's like, what rumor can I think of to destroy your life about? Well, you, yeah, because it's about like, your babies. They're like Sour Patch kids or Sour Patch things. Like first they're sour, then they're sweet. <laughs> that's that's them. They're like during the day, they're like, I love you, baby. And, you know, like go to school. Mommy's going to pick you up. And then as soon as they have to go film at night, it's like, okay, bitch, I'm like game on. It's so and it's funny like, to it's, me. You know, it's funny. Speaking it's of which, funny. I know that we were talking about Amory left. You're not surprised by that, right? I couldn't care less. Okay. Uh, again, I haven't really been into Beverly Hills. And every time I try even five minutes of any episode, I'm just like, ah, uh, it's just draining. But Anne Marie, I think, was was one of the catalysts for that as well. Are you excited? As, as Kyle's story. Yes, I told you. I'm so excited for Portia to return to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I think it's going to be great. Did you hear about the cops going to her house? Last no, night? I did not hear about the cops going so to her house. Simon Gobadia. What is going on with cops going to houses in Atlanta? First, you have Kim, Kim Zolciak. Like, how many times? How many times That's a what night? I, I even said in my video earlier for Up and Adam Channel 2 for like the extra coverage and stuff. I talked about this a little bit because I knew we'd be talking about it on here. Um, so last night... Simon called the police because Portia showed up to the house with a gunman. That is how they worded it. Now, let me tell you how I feel this actually happened. Because I was thinking about it. I'm like, first of all, Portia's not going to have you axed, right? Her life is too good. She's not going to go sit in jail. She has money and she can definitely meet a way more, you know, wealthy, attractive man. Like this, the, all of these things can be true. What I'm guessing happened 
is he's trying to limit her access from my understanding to the marital home. Okay. And she went back with her mother and her assistant. And I think that she was trying to gather some things. And I think that she wanted to bring this man with her into the house as protection in case Simon flipped out once she came into the house. So I think that's what the man was for. I think that he's labeling him and the, you know, his statements or whoever's the one putting these statements out as a hired gunman. And I think it's almost like how I just said to you, Lala hired armed security. And you're like, oh, well, the way you worded it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. I think that this was just somebody, I think that this is going to be blown way out of proportion. I think that he wants to make her look really bad right now. And she already put out a statement saying, get ready. I have receipts. Like, wow. And he's being accused of a lot of things. I mean, this is the, this is what everyone always says too. You know, you lose him, how you get him. Right. Right. Like this is, it's just a uh, Simon Gobadia. Speaking of returns, Who? possibly um, an exit. Since we're talking about Porsche returning, people exiting shows. Have you heard the rumor of um, Eileen that Davidson? That does not make me excited. Being offered may, potentially maybe in talks to come back. Mistake number 15, guys. Did we not learn? Like, don't bring them. That's not who we want it back. No. <laughs> like, that's not the one. I, I didn't realize, too, how many se seasons Eileen actually was on. No, I know. Else. I didn't find Eileen to be good TV. I thought I didn't find Camille to be good TV, really. I didn't find Adrian Malouf to be good TV. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you kind of, I don't know. I think you were used to them, right? Like that season one was great. Camille's a great shit stir. Adrian, they, I even heard someone once her who who the other night once her wanted her back. Lucas Gage on Watch What Happens Live with Katie yeah. Maloney. He said, you know that that's one of the the housewives he'd like to see return. You know what they should no. have done is, and I know that this is actually this Bravo. You should steal this shit because. Uh what I think that they should have done is Heather DeBro is building this massive mansion, right? It's going to take her three years to build. That's what she just said. Not three another years one. To no, she built, it's already a mansion. Oh. It's taking her three years to rip it apart, gut it out and renovate it. But she has this big penthouse. What they should do is like how they segued from Beverly Hills to Vanderpump rolls and Vanderpump rolls to the Valley. They should have her driving to her penthouse and then going to meet up with the ladies. And Heather DeBro should be the new housewife on the Real Housewives uh, of Beverly Hills. I see. And then I take see. her out of Orange County. You know what I mean? I mean, we put Taylor in Orange County. It didn't work. But I think putting Heather on Beverly Hills would really make sense. Some of them would just, just hate her. Erica would hate her. Great. Yeah. Put her on Beverly Hills. You let's, know what I mean? Yeah, let's go. I and think then, it'd be great. Like Sutton and Heather, like... Sutton is all about like Miss Manners and Heather's like, actually, that's very D class A, D class A. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like they would just, and Garcelle would probably sit back and be like, this is actually some funny shit because both of them are trying to outclass each other. Like it would be great. It TV. would be great because you can see Heather and Erica, Heather and Sutton, Heather and whoever. I think the dynamics between each of those possibilities would be great. They should just do it, you yeah. know? Yeah. Okay. Someone said in the live chat, Taylor doesn't work anymore. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. My last they tried. My last thing that they I tried. want to tell Jason is Shannon Bedore right now has officially um well been served. She is being served over a seventy-five thousand dollar loan that her ex John Jansen is claiming that he gave her. One was in the amount of forty-five thousand dollars and that was wired to her, and then the other was in the amount of thirty thousand dollars and that was a check just to get a little bit more specific Check. here. So she wanted a facelift. You can wire me that money anytime you want. See how her face is lifted? Okay. She saw Sonia Morgan do it. She wanted to do it. You know, we've seen some great facelifts. Caroline Stanberry just did it. She looks amazing. She looks amazing. Shannon we've Bedore. seen some not some, great facelifts. We've seen some yeah. not great facelifts. But the point is, he's saying, I want my money back. This happened in 2022. She's saying, no, that was a monetary gift. You gifted me that facelift. And now she said, you know what? I'll give you your money. But so we can skip all of the headache and skip the attorney's fees, you have to sign this non-disparagement, which technically means you and your little girlfriend can't go on the show and talk shit about me, which would he would already be in violation of because you know they've already filmed of these course. scenes. And then they of would course. play out after he signed the non-disparagement. This is a recipe for disaster. And he said, F, no, I'm not doing that. I'm taking you to court. Where, wow. are you at? Where I'm at with that? Well, I don't know. 
two negatives don't equal a positive. So actually, I, that's not true. Yeah. Two negatives. Oh, actually, do they? Yeah, do they, they actually equal a positive? they actually equal a positive. I don't know. It, I think it depends on the situation. In this case, it just equals more negative. I'm actually really looking forward to OC this year. I think it's going to be. I great. think it's going to be great. What a great kind of back slapping situation to put Shannon in. Not great. I mean, you know that, and this is obviously she got she's getting sued on the show right now because they're filming the show i'm not laughing at this because i think it's funny to be sued i'm i'm just thinking in my head it feels like john jansen and alexis bellino are concocting ways to make themselves more relevant because obviously this is now played out yep. so then Tamara judge is going to be in the sprinter van or in the car and she's going to be like oh my god guys i just got a google alert did you guys just see the news shanna bedore is being sued by john jansen and then they're going to end up going to lunch. No, I just saw Alexis yesterday. She never mentioned anything. And then Shannon's going to walk in and be like, hey, guys, I'm not having a really good day. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, we don't want to act like we know in the confessional. And then she's going to be like, why don't you ask your friend Alexis? Boom. Good Lord. Right? Yes. Yes. Storyboard. And Keish, yes, you're right. That's it. Two wrongs don't make a right. That's what I was looking for. And this is what that's what we're in. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm excited for OC though. I'm excited for OC too. Okay, guys, we have been on here for 51 minutes. Got some haircuts to get and stuff like that. We have a little bit of running around to do for this week. And I'm not going to lie. The pollen is killing my eyes right now. So thank you guys for looking at me like this. Yeah, it's bad. But I love you guys. Jason, did we miss anything? I don't think so. I mean, I think we added a couple things, didn't we? I think, yeah, actually, we did. Yeah. <laughs> we did. It was great. Sometimes if we're just talking, we we go on too long. We had yeah, no, I think we hit it, guys. This is this is Monday. It's our last week of March. Welcome to spring. Yeah. Hope you guys have a great week. And we're going to announce the Rose Forever winner um, this week at some point, too. And, um, yeah, we'll keep you guys posted. And uh, we look forward to the members-only housewarming party, <laughs> whatever that looks like. The stages. We'll That'll keep you be posted with the stages. But, That'll be fun. All right. We love you guys. Smash that like button, show some love, and thanks for the 700 in the room. Bye. Bye, everyone.